All right, let's take about, talk about anti-diabetic patient medications. Oh, excuse me, that should be anti-diabetic medications. Uh, the endpoints for type 2 diabetes is to lower blood pressure, blood sugar, blood sugar. Uh, you know, I don't know about you folks, any of you who are in medicine, but I was always frustrated. I even when I was in training, and I, and I am today whenever I see it happen, to treat a type 2 diabetic, I've never been able to do it successfully. No, I mean, if you call successful achieving a stable low blood sugar, I've never been able to do it. And I've never seen anybody else do it, but maybe you can do it. You know, you take the patient, you put them on a whole bunch of pills and a whole bunch of insulin, their blood sugar one day is 285, the next day it's 55, the next day it's 170, the next day it's 210. You know, it's all over the place. I don't know, maybe you guys are better doctors than I am. I can't do it. Do you reduce the, um, the, the chance of getting a heart attack and dying of a heart attack? The answer is no. Do you cause weight gain? Yes. And do you cause complications? No question about it. There uh, is a statement that appears in the PDR. It started appearing in 1972. It appears also in 2006 and every year in between. <laughs> it's about the UDGP study that was done and reported the UDGP. Do you ever see this paragraph, heavy black print? Well, I'll just pick up your PDR and take a look. There's only two paragraphs of heavy back black print that appear under oral diabetic medications, particularly the sulfonylureas. Has appeared there since 1972 is in your, 19, in your 2006 edition. What it says is special warning on increased risk of cardiovascular mortality. It says the UGDP study found that patients treated for five to eight years with a fixed dose of a sulfonylurea increased the risk of dying of heart disease by two and a half times. Now, how could anybody prescribe a medication with that kind of warning on it when your goal is to keep these people from dying of heart disease since you already know they don't die of high blood sugar? How could anybody prescribe this? You know, if you're as old as I am, back in 1972, when these, this warning came out, is whole sulfonylureas disappeared. They stopped using them. And of course, the drug companies with their spin doctors and their, their, their drug salespeople and their ability to manipulate the literature have gotten to the point where these drugs, which are extremely highly profitable, are back into every doctor's office. But it hasn't changed this warning. And of course, when you take anti diabetic pills, you increase insulin levels, and high insulin levels do what? They drive fat into fat cells, and so these people gain about 20 pounds when you initiate therapy, which is kind of an interesting thing, isn't it? Here's the scenario that I remember, and the one that patients tell me quite often is they go to the doctor, they have diabetes. The doctor says, you got diabetes, you know, you're fat, you need to lose weight. I'm going to put you on these diabetic pills. The patient says, great, great. Comes back the next month, Patient gets up on the scale, the doctor looks at the patient and says, hey, I taught you, told you to lose weight. Look at you, you're, you're even fatter. And now that you're fatter, your blood sugar's higher, now I gotta give you more pills that make you gain weight. <laughs> it goes on and on and on, doesn't it? That's why one of the first things I do when I take care of a di type two diabetic is I take them off all their diabetic pills and I take them off most of their insulin or all their insulin. A type two diabetic, of course, not a type one. Because you gotta break that cycle, you gotta get them to start to lose weight. That's what you have to do, that's what you've been telling, that's what every doctor tells every diabetic, type two diabetic, is lose the weight, and then they give them pills that make them fat. Okay, as far as the heart disease, I just wanna go through three major studies with you. You can look these up if you want. The record is clear. The Diabetes C Control and Complication Study trial on type one diabetics, the largest study ever done, six and a half years of intensive insulin therapy for type one diabetics. The results compared to people treated less aggressively is you increase the risk factors of dying of heart disease. They got fatter, higher cholesterol, high bad cholesterol, high triglycerides, and higher blood pressure in those aggressively treated. How about the uh, Veterans Affairs Cooperative Study in Glycemic Control and Complications of Non-Insulin Dependent di Diabetes? Uh, type 2 diabetics with a history of heart attack were treated. Those treated with insulin and diabetic medications had an increased risk of death. And how about the TRACE study, the very large European study, diabetic patients with a history of heart attacks treated with diabetic pills and or insulin results, almost twice the death rate as those treated with diet alone and diabetics treated without medication, in other words, diet alone had the same death rate as people without diabetes. Uh, are we supposed to feel good about treating diabetics with diabetic pills? I know of no evidence that says otherwise. Maybe you could enlighten me. Okay, how about diet and lifestyle? And I have to admit, you know, there's not a lot of research on diet and lifestyle, but you know why, there's not the money. I mean, you don't have 
billions of dollars like the drug companies do, so it's hard to get this kind of research done. But what does exist in type 2 diabetes is that you can reduce the risk factors clearly, in other words, obesity, and, and if you change them to a vegetarian diet, insulin resistance decreases or disappears. Also, it has been shown in studies as far back as, well, as far back as Shirley Sweeney in 1927, Rabinovich in 1939, and most recently Neil Bernard in uh, 1999, that you can cure these people of type 2 diabetes simply by changing their diet. Well, why not? Why wouldn't you be able to? I mean, after all, everybody, I don't think you could find a doctor any place in, in any society Europe, Asia, the United States, it would tell you anything, but a type 2 diabetic is a type 2 diabetic because they ate the greasy American diet and got fat. Does anybody have another explanation for it? I don't know. Well, what happened if you stopped doing that to them and they got healthy and thin? Would their type 2 diabetes go away? I think so. I mean, that's what I see. And so Neil Bernard and his group, the use of a low-fat vegetarian diet in patients with uh, type 2 diabetes was associated with a significant reduction in fasting glucose concentration and body weight in the absence of recommendations for exercise. That's pretty cool.